Good afternoon, Cayman, and welcome to Rethink Parenting, brought to you by the Family Resource Center. We are happy to be live on air with you again today. And we are proud to be starting the International Men's Day campaign this month. So this month for our Rethink Parenting radio segment, each Tuesday at 1 p.m., we are going to be focusing on the International Men's Day campaign. And we're going to be talking about issues related to men and boys. Of course, IMD is celebrated worldwide. And we too here in the Cayman Islands want to be a part of that observation because we have several men who lead by example, several men who are positive role models and contributors to our society and our community. And we want to acknowledge and to celebrate them every year. So we are going to be focusing on the contributions of men and boys throughout the month of November. And we invite you to join us each Tuesday at 1 p.m. as we talk IMD for 2022. For this program for today, we are actually joined by Dr. Jerome Taluxing from Trinidad and Tobago, who is online here with us today. And we're going to be talking about the mission of IMD. What is International Men's Day? How did it begin? What is its purpose? What's the mission? And we're going to be discussing that with Dr. Jerome. Dr. Jerome, are you with us? Yes, I am. Good afternoon, everybody. Yes, sir. We are certainly happy to have you join us all the way from home today, and we definitely want to get into it um, right away. So if you don't mind introducing yourself, sir, and um, tell us a little bit about you. All right. I am a lecturer in the Department of History at the University of the West Indies in St. Augustine. I have been teaching history there for the past, 16 years, one five, and uh, before I was a primary school teacher. And I have become involved in men's issues since 1999 when I saw the negative images of men being portrayed in the media and the communities. Okay, good, good, good. So you have been doing a lot of education work um, for for several years. Thank you for your service to the the Cabin Committee, especially um, especially Trinidad and Tobago. All right, good. So is it fair to say that you would have you are the founder of the International Men's Day um, movement? And is it fair to call it a movement? Is it an International Men's Day campaign or is it a movement? Where do, where, 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 where do we fall? Well, I think there has been some controversy because people had started observances in the past, but it never got off the ground. They tried having an observance in their countries, United States or Malta. Mm -hmm. It never got off the ground. And I decided that I wanted to zero in on, be more focused. And I chose November the 19th, you know, for two main reasons. Yes. The birthday of my dad, who is a role model for my family and my community, and I thought that so many families out there need father figures, male, positive male role models. Mm-hmm. And um, secondly, on November the 19th, 1989, my football team, Trinidad Tobago, we lost 1-0 in a World Cup qualifying match to the United States. And I wanted to capture that moment because it transcended barriers and created a lot of unity, you know, across gender, class, ethnic, uh, geographical barriers. So I, those are the two reasons why I chose the date. And to answer your question, if it's a movement or a campaign, I would say, yes, it's more a movement. It involves a lot of campaigning. But more importantly, it involves a change in our thinking, our mindset, you know, the way we see society. So if you are correct, it's a movement, it's a campaign, but it's also a change in our behavior and the way we perceive society. Okay, of course. So there are, with the movement itself, they are challenging some of the status quo that exists surrounding men and the issues related correct. to men and, and how we perceive them, what we, what we think yeah. about them and which influence our feelings towards them and, and our subsequent actions. So it's very important Correct. for us to 
be zeroing in on these issues. At the time, Dr. Jerome, when um, there was the focusing coming from you and your team, was there a effort to do more within the Caribbean region or was it meant to be global in nature? It was meant to be global. It started off initially in Trinidad and Tobago because, you know, I saw men and boys being involved in some antisocial activity, mm-hmm. you know, always being blamed for being part of social problems. And then I realized that it wasn't just Trinidad and Tobago or the Caribbean, but I was sensing something globally where, you know, men were stigmatized, stereotyped, marginalized, alienated. Men were almost invisible, you know, and they were suffering from mental health issues and they were being ignored by important sectors in society. So this is what I decided to take something local, make it regional and global. Right. Okay. And and, and that's good. Of course, if we're going to really be impacting change, then we need to expand the reach of the movement itself. So definitely, for sure, we, we, we appreciate um, the, the amount of persons that are now involved. How many countries at present for 2022? Can, do you know the number of the number of countries who are now yeah. observing International Men's Day? Next month, we'll be having 93 countries. And, I mean, I have seen some real big progress, you know, because by the year 2000, we only had about 45 countries. So... Mm-hmm. Every year it has been building, expanding. Okay, good. And, 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 and the idea is for it to, to get to all countries or as many as possible globally. Correct. Correct. Yeah. All right, good. All right, so we are speaking with Dr. Jerome Taluxing from Trinidad and Tobago, and he's joining us here today on our Rethink Parenting program brought to you by Bobo 91 FM, 89.1 FM, and we are focusing this month on International Men's Day. And the theme for this year, Dr. Jerome, what is the theme for International Men's Day 2022? The theme is men leading by example. Men leading by example simply means we want men to be role models. We want men, you know, not just to talk, but to walk the talk, to be exemplars in their community, in their churches, you know, in their homes. What that has been happening hasn't that been happening before? That's that's nothing new. It it is. You are correct. It has been happening before. It is nothing new. But I want to see it done on a larger scale. And why I say that is that, you know, here in Trinidad and Tobago, we have more than five hundred murders, mm-hmm. right? For this year, this year hasn't been finished. So, you know, when we think about that frightening statistic, five more than five hundred murders. It shows that we are not we're not really being exemplars. We're not really leading by example. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I mean, one, one, one has to wonder. Well, an example is being set. Whether or not that is a, a positive one, and and I, I f- the campaign itself goes towards being those positive male role models as part of the pillars of the International Men's Day movement. Yes. 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 You are correct. All right. Good. All right, we are going to go on our first break here on Bobo 89.1 FM. We are talking with Dr. Jerome Taluxing from Trinidad and Tobago. He is the founder or the re-energizer of the International Men's Day campaign. I am Andre from the Family Resource Center. The Family Resource Center invite you to join us on Bobo 89.1 FM for our weekly show called Rethink Parenting where we share practical and positive parenting information to support happy, healthy family life. We'll share how to handle day-to-day issues. We'll address common challenges with parenting, such as how to manage misbehavior, supporting our teens through growing up, managing co-parenting dynamics, and how to take care of ourselves and manage our own stressors. Family Resource Center, committed to building people, building families. Tune in on Bobo 89.1 FM. Find us at frc.gov.ky or call us on 949-0006. Submit your questions and concerns regarding parenting to us and we'll share them on air. Join us for our weekly show called Rethink Parenting. 
All right. Welcome back, listeners. Welcome to our Rethink Parenting program brought to you by the Family Resource Center. My name is Andre Bailey, program facilitator there with the Family Resource Center. And online, on live online with us today is Dr. Jerome Teluk Singh from Trinidad and Tobago, founder of the International Men's Day Movement. Dr. Jerome. Yes. Tell us... Why is it important for us to recognize International Men's Day each year? This could be observed every five years or every ten years. Why is it necessary for have an annual observation of, of this campaign? I believe that we need to refocus our energies. We need to re-examine ourselves. We need some self-examination of the men's movement. But we also have to analyze some of the statistics out there regarding men. So this day, it's not just, you know, to celebrate positive achievements, but to also look at some of the statistics regarding men and health. How many men are diagnosed every year, you know, with heart attacks? Are men taking care of themselves? Do they allow diabetes, you know, to ruin their lives? You know, are they going by a psychologist if they have mental health issues? So it's a day in which, you know, we are celebrating, but we're also trying to Help our men. Help those men, you know, who might be ignoring, you know, some warning signs. Mm -hmm. And also to try to uplift those men who might be incarcerated. Maybe some men might be, have lost their jobs during the pandemic. You know, some men, you know, they lost their job retrenchment. So it's a time when we are reaching out to all men. Yes, yes, and that's, that's that's very very important, and 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 doing it on an annual basis keeps it at the forefront. The same mission yes. that you're talking about, it keeps that alive. Correct, it keeps it alive, and I'll tell you something else, which is very important, mm -hmm. that the men's movement, IMD, has offshoots, and one of the important offshoots is you know, World Day of the Boy Child or International Day of the Boy Child on the 16th of May where we, we don't just look at the boys, but we also look at, you know, how fathering is done. So it's a, it's a nice way that the movement is developing in that it's not just November the 19th. It has expanded a bit. Other countries look at Movember where they grow a moustache and focus on the men. And, you know, we even have another day now in May where we look at boys and young men. So... I'm glad that, you know, the, the men and the society is not just seeing it as one day, 19th of November, but they are already seeing, you know, the importance of examining men's issues. I think you might know on your listeners that June is considered, you know, Men's Health Month in some countries. Yes. Which is right? also so, so, Father's Day fall. <laughs> June. So we, we are seeing now that the world has changed in the 21st century. And, you know, we are now starting to realize that, you know, men could also be fragile like women and, and men are human beings. We are not just indestructible machines and we're not just robots. So we are, you know, beginning to be seen as, as people who need help and people who need to be um, recognized and acknowledged for their contributions. Right, good, and, and that's very important, very, very important. For men are so many times put in that box and are given a role to play and, 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 are, and are seen in one way, one dimension. Correct. Good, all right, good. So with this movement, this year's theme, Men Leading by Example, what are some everyday ways that men can be leaders within their families and within the larger community. We are asking men to lead by example, but are there any practical ways that men can do so? Yes. I have been already, you know, discussing with some men's groups. They have been asking me for advice since July about, you know, how they could take steps and what to discuss at these meetings that will be here next month. And I told them that, you know, we need to see men now as providers. You know, men are coming back to be seen as breadwinners. Men, not just the sole breadwinner, the, the burden just not rests on a man, but a man also, you know, contributing to the family. The man spending more time with his child or children, right? So he is in leading by example. If other men in the neighborhood see that this 
one man is spending time with his children and he's not in the rum shop, those men might say, you know what, I also want to go and help my son with his homework. I also want to help my daughter with a project she has for school. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, this is all I start to, to tell them, to let it start up small, start up at the home. I told them that, you know, if you're having services in the temple or the mosque or the church, you know, let the, let the men play, you know, a responsible role. Don't just have them picking up offering or, or as ushers. Let them, you know, take part in the services. So it's a, it's a step, a small step, where we are trying to see that men are, or have always been in society mm-hmm. leading. They are leading, but often they are not leading as good examples. And, you know, last month I was communicating via email with the IMD person in Ukraine. Yes. And he's telling me that he will have problems to celebrate International Men's Day this year. He had a big celebration last year, right. 2021. And he's telling me because of the Russian war, he's having a problem. And I told him, I said, well, this is a good example where we see the soldiers defending their homeland. Uh, you know, and the examples for the young, the young ones to see that, you know, they're trying to preserve democracy. So that it's interesting to see International Men's Day has reached as far as, you know, this global event, the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Right. Well, that's, that's very interesting. It's very interesting. I mean, our, our thoughts and our prayers go out to the people of Ukraine and what is happening in their country at this time. Mm-hmm. We are talking with Dr. Jerome Taluxing from Trinidad and Tobago as part of our Rethink Parenting radio program brought to you by the Family Resource Center. This month, we are focusing on the International Men's Day Movement, which is observed worldwide on November 19th. And I just want to pause for this time to tell you about some of the events that we have here locally for International Men's Day lined up for this year. So today, November 1, mark the launch of our IMD Um, campaign for this year and we have a social media series that's going out talking about why imd so we're going to be posting weekly facts about the history and purpose of the international men's day movement some of which dr jerome is talking about today we also invite families uh parents children everyone to practice to participate in what we call real time R-E-E-L, time. Of course, that's a play on quality time and spending real time with your children. And what we say is that you make a reel, a short reel on TikTok or Facebook or whatever social media platform that you use. And in that reel, do an activity with the men and the boys in your life and post it. And be sure to tag IMDK Man as well as at FRCK Man so we could also see and promote the activities that you're doing as part of International Men's Day in honoring and celebrating the men and boys in your life. Of course, on November 12th, we have the fourth annual basketball tournament. This, Dr. Jerome, has been one of our hallmark events for International Men's Day over the past three to four years. We have had a 3x3 basketball tournament, and that's happening again this year on the 12th of November at Kamana Bay. It's free entry, and we provide IMD t-shirts to all our participants, and there are several... Um, several prizes and awards to receive and we have several sponsors who are also on board for our International Men's Day celebrations this year. So come on out. We have the defending champions who are ready to defend their title and we invite all um, boys and men. The important thing and interesting thing about our basketball competition is that for International Men's Day, our competition has a mixture of men and boys. So while the adults are playing, there has to be juniors on the team at the same time. And it provides an opportunity for camaraderie and for positive male role modeling and for, you know, interaction, positive interaction between men and boys on the court in a competitive yet friendly environment. So that's November 12th for the 3 x basketball competition. So all basketballers um, visit FRC. Um, dot gov dot ky where you could register or send us an email frc at gov dot ky on november 17th or the sister agency the counseling center will be hosting therapeutic thursday so visit the dcs's website dcs dot gov dot ky 
double click on programs and then you're able to listen to that episode which comes out on the 17th of November for ther- Therapeutic Thursdays for this month. Of course, our Dress for Cause will be on November 18th. And that's the Dress for Cause where we are selling International Men's Day t-shirts. I have one on here right now. I'm going to be doing a reel in a moment. So visit our uh, our Instagram page for that and you will see what it looks like. Um, we have white dry fit shirts this year and it's only $25. Of course, all proceeds go to support social programs for men and boys here on island. And we encourage persons to purchase an IMD t-shirt and then to join us on the steps of the government admin building for the photo opportunity on the 18th of November. So that's the Dress for Cause on November 18th. And then this year, we are partnering with the Cayman Islands Football Association for the Six Aside Football Competition. So that will be at 9 o'clock on the 19th, which is the actual day of International Men's Day. We're going to be at the CIFA Stadium out there in Prospect. So we invite persons to register online now to be a part of that. And for Corporate K Man who are listening to our program today, if you want to sponsor a team, it's only two hundred and fifty dollars to sponsor that team to be a part of the celebrations for International Men's Day. So that's the nineteenth of November for all the footballers. We're not limited to basketballers. We're calling all the footballers to come out as well on the nineteenth of November for the six aside competition. And again, that is a mix a mixed tournament. So adults and juniors play together on the same team. Again, we are promoting um, positive male role models while being on court. We are promoting camaraderie on the football pitch. We are going to be having our family skills session this month on November 23, and that will be at 6 p.m. Email us at frc at jv.ky for the registration link, and that will be a virtual presentation. And the topic is Raising Resilient Boys. So join us online on Zoom for that family skills session on raising resilient boys this year. And of course, we want to make mention of our sponsors for International Men's Day campaign. Um, Davenport Development Limited has been a partner with us for many years, and we want to say thank you to Davenport. Burger King is on board. Uh, Gender Affairs Unit, of course, they have always supported us. Um, A.L. Thompson's supporting us this year, CIFA, providing the pitch for the football competition. And of course, there is NCB Capital Markets Cayman Limited who are on board with us for International Men's Day this year. And we cannot forget um, the Cayman Islands Basketball Association who is with us for the 3x3 competition. So thank you to all our sponsors and um, we invite the public to, to be a part of all the events for this year, International Men's Day. We are on Bobo 89.1 FM, and we're going to be taking a short break and come back with our Dr. Jerome as we do another segment on International Men's Day 2022 celebration. The Family Resource Center invite you to join us on Bobo 89.1 FM for our weekly show called Rethink Parenting where we share practical and positive parenting information to support happy, healthy family life. We'll share how to handle day-to-day issues. We'll address common challenges with parenting, such as how to manage misbehavior, supporting our teens through growing up, managing co-parenting dynamics, and how to take care of ourselves and manage our own stressors. Family Resource Center, committed to building people, building families. Tune in on Bobo 89.1 FM. Find us at frc.gov.ky or call us on 949-0006. Submit your questions and concerns regarding parenting to us and we'll share them on air. Join us for our weekly show called Rethink Parenting. All right, so we are back live on air for our Rethink Parenting program brought to you by the Family Resource Center. My name is Andre Bailey, parent facilitator with the Family Resource Center. And online we have Dr. Jerome T. Singh from Trinidad, who is the founder of the IMD movement. 
and we are happy to have him join us and to to share with us some of the genesis and the background for the International Men's Day movement and what has been happening with that movement since it restarted and was revamped by him and his team. Dr. Jerome, there are some pillars of International Men's Day, some objectives for this campaign itself, this movement. Can you speak to us about the objectives of International Men's Day? Sure, I'll be glad to do that. I will briefly tell you that there are six pillars or six objectives in which International Men's Day is built on. And one of the first ones, you know, and one of the most important ones which we see every day is to simply to create a safer, better world. You know, where citizens could could feel safe and reach their full potential. And a second objective, which is again relevant to us in 2022, and it will be in the future, is to improve gender relations, promote gender equality. And we and this is so important because we always hear about discrimination. You know, um, the third objective is to highlight discrimination against men. And we see this discrimination discrimination in many sectors in society. I'll give you a good example. Um, if a man is getting a divorce or he's been separated from his girlfriend or wife and he has a child or children, it seems almost automatically the court grants custody of that child or children to the female. Right? So it doesn't matter if, you know, the, the girlfriend or wife is abusive to the child or the children or has a mental problem. You know, the court feels sympathetic to the female. So this is one form of discrimination. And another form, you know, is sometimes certain jobs. You know, we have stereotyped as belonging to females. You know, when you hear the term secretary, you think a female. Nurse, you think female. So you see, we have, men have been facing some discrimination. And they fought pillar objective is to focus on men's health and our well-being. And I touched on that earlier in the interview. And I just want to expand to say that that health and well-being includes not just physical health and mental health, but emotional health or spiritual health. You know, and when I mean emotional, sometimes a lot of men go through trauma as adults or younger and this affects them throughout their life. You know, they have psychological scars. So this focus on men's health and well-being is to help repair those men, maybe with damaged masculinities, to help heal those minds that have been damaged, you know, to help to help with the trauma. And I will tell the listeners that they will be surprised that you do not need to be a trained psychologist or psychiatrist or social worker or counselor to help somebody. A simple discussion, you know, a simple good morning, a simple talk could cheer somebody up. It could help save a life. It could help prevent somebody from committing suicide. So I want you all, don't believe for one moment that you have to be a trained therapist to help a man who is depressed or to help a boy or to help anybody who might have a mental problem. You know that we all have that potential in us to reach out and help people. And the fifth pillar to celebrate men's positive contributions to society. Uh, I mentioned earlier invisible men. We have men in the community, the neighborhood, in the world. You know, we have men in the families that we ignore, we overlook. (coughs) And I, I want us to see some of these men who are doing volunteer work. They don't want recognition. They are never recognized in life. They don't get any awards, no trophies, no medals. It's just that they have a love to help others. I could tell you stories about men helping with their wives who have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. You will not see these men out there in the front page of the news. You will not hear about them when you turn on the news, on your television. But these are good men, you know, and, and these are the, some of the positive contributions that international men they want to highlight. You never see the man who donates blood you know, for the Red Cross. You know, you never see the man who goes to the hospital maybe to visit the sick or to read to, to the sick children. So I, I want us, you know, to, to look at these pillars and see how they relate to our society. And the final pillar, the sixth pillar, 
is to promote positive male role models. And I'm so glad that you all in um, Cayman Islands will be having, you know, basketball and football because sometimes within sports, we, we look for positive role models and sometimes our role models fail us and we feel depressed mm. and, and we feel angry. You know, and I, I want to say that we don't just have to look within sports or we don't, we don't have to look for movie stars, but we have to look right within the home, right within your country, right within your school, right within your workplace to find positive male role models, men who are uplifting, men who could empower others, men who are leaders, right? And so that's it in a summary, those six very important pillars and objectives of IMD. Of course, and they have been driving the movement for the past uh, few years. How long has this been observed? This year is 24 years. Next year will be the big 25th anniversary that some countries are excited about, but 24 years so far. 24 years looking forward towards the 25th year next year. So this year, for sure, we have been using the pillars, as with, with other years, to steer us in the activities that we do to ensure that uh, the positive contributions of men are celebrated within society. Thank you for giving us that education on the different, the different pillars of International Men's Day and how we can um, follow those pillars to ensure that men are celebrated. What are some of the things that are happening in, in your local um, community for International Men's Day this year, sir? Yeah, here in Trinidad and Tobago, the public library will be having a series of panel discussions. There are branches of the library in our capital, Port of Spain, and other areas, including Tobago, and we'll be having panel discussions looking at issues, you know, dealing with health care, dealing with psychological care, dealing with how we relate to women, you know, dealing with how, you know, problems facing manhood. So... We have any panel discussion, and we'll also, at my university, University of the West Indies, there will be a question and answer time on Thursday, the 17th of November. I know a few institutions at their workplace will be having lunchtime seminars. Um, so these are some of the events that are being organized, in, being organized right now. And one very important event is that in South Trinidad, the bikers, men who belong to motorcycle clubs and car clubs, they'll be having a rally. So there will be there'll be a public display on the 19th of November for almost 25 to 30 miles. They will be out there in their full regalia. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. good to hear the different activities that are happening across the region and happening for you there over in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, similar, a similar thing is happening here. We are currently in the process of securing sponsorship to host our flagship event, which is the right. State of Men and Boys Forum. So we right. are in the process of planning that right now. It's a State of Men and Boys Forum, and we are, of course, inviting the public as well as Corporate Cayman to join us in supporting and to sponsoring this program. Feel free to reach out to the Family Resource Center 949 or email frc at gov.ky to, to, to give your contributions, to give your support and your sponsorship for the event itself. We, this year, looking at the State of Men and Boys um, the forum that we're having, we're going to be having special speakers, specialists across the island to speak on different topics. And we have identified some areas for this year. And I figure it's similar to your public library meetings. Um, we're going to be looking at celebrating masculinity. It's not all toxic. And so many times persons hear the word masculinity and it becomes a buzz trigger word for them. And they closely associate toxicity with masculinity. And in this forum, part of um, the presentation is how we go about celebrating this masculinity like you have been speaking about, Dr. Jerome. The next one is um, raising the, the, the rising unemployment rate of men, the silent crisis. Mm-hmm. 
So we are right. going to be having those from the employment sector within Cayman um, training and employment to speak on this rising unemployment issue and the crisis that it creates. You spoke about provision earlier and men being part of um, the household in providing for their families, providing for the women and the children in their in the family and the extended right. family in those situations. So it's a, a silent crisis where men and the unemployment rate of men rising. And of course, we're going to be having a speaker directly on the theme, men leading by example. And for that, we're going to be uh, tunnel in on the power of mentorship. How does mentorship help with this setting of a positive male role model? How does mentorship help with men leading by example? And what does mentorship do for the next generation of boys in our society, boys who become men and leaders in their own right? So we can see that across the region, especially well here in the Cayman Islands, as well as in Trinidad, we are having some deep conversations on what um, are the state of men and boys and what we can do uh, as a community to join that conversation, um, to listen to the call to action, and to be a part of of the, the improvements of celebration of men and boys in our society. Um, Dr. Jerome, if we could ask, is there, what is the next step? What else would you like to see happening with this international movement? Yes, there have been some successes. Yes, you spoke of the offshoot World Day of the Boy Child in May. You spoke about um, the different countries who are now a part of it, the increase over time. What next? Yes, we are celebrating men. Is there something else that you'd like to see happen with this movement? Yes, I think that is a very good question. And I think it's something that I've been telling people that we need to keep focused, and that is we need to try to get it on the United Nations calendar of events. Mm -hmm. As you and some of your listeners would know that, you know, there are certain special days, you know, which the United Nations and other organizations like the ILO would have. And the only way that we could get it on the calendar is a resolution has to be passed at the annual UN meeting in New York, and this resolution has to be put forward by a member state of the UN so that I've been asking my country for the last two decades, for more than 20 years, that our representative to the United Nations has to pass a resolution, you know, and as governments change, you know, it's very frustrating. I, I'm hoping that Cayman Islands or another Caribbean country would be able to, you know, get their UN representative to put forward this resolution so that the other UN countries could vote on it when the United Nations meet in September. And that is, you know, my, my next step, my next dream, my next hope to have it on the calendar. And secondly, I, I want to see IMD, you know, reaching more to the the grassroots communities, the rural population. It's still, I find, a lot very urban-based. You know, many people in the rural areas, many people in the poorer areas and countries often don't know about it. Many people who are illiterate, you know, don't know about the National Men's Day. So I have been trying to focus on some of these communities, and I'm hoping that, you know, Cayman Islands and other Caribbean countries but also come on board as we try to get it everywhere <laughs> yes of course and, and we definitely want uh it to be a part of the un calendar and, and and for other areas remote areas country areas yeah less urban areas to be a part of the celebrations be a part of the movement those are some excellent goals dr jerome and i support you in in wanting to see the the advancement and the development of the campaign itself so uh, we go on our another break 
and we come back with Dr. Jerome Tillotsing from Trinidad and Tobago. He is the founder of the International Men's Day Movement. You are listening to Rethink Parenting, brought to you by the Family Resource Center, and this is Bobo 89.1 FM. The Family Resource Center invite you to join us on Bobo 89.1 FM for our weekly show called Rethink Parenting where we share practical and positive parenting information to support happy, healthy family life. We'll share how to handle day-to-day issues. We'll address common challenges with parenting, such as how to manage misbehavior, supporting our teens through growing up, managing co-parenting dynamics, and how to take care of ourselves and manage our own stressors. Family Resource Centre, committed to building people, building families. Tune in on Bobo 89.1 FM. Find us at frc.gov.ky or call us on 949-0006. Submit your questions and concerns regarding parenting to us and we'll share them on air. Join us for our weekly show called Rethink Parenting. Welcome back, listeners. and Thank you for rejoining us for Rethink Parenting. Brought to you by the Family Resource Center. My name is Andre Bailey, and I am live and online with Dr. Jerome Taluxing at this point. He is the founder of the International Men's Day Movement, and he was telling us about the vision and the hope for the International Men's Day Movement. What next? Now that we are celebrating um, 90 countries across the globe, where do we go from here? And Dr. Jerome spoke about wanting to see International Men's Day listed as part of the UN's calendar of events to, to get a date on the UN's calendar, November 19th, to be dubbed as and passed and ratified as International Men's Day, as well as for there to be improvement in the access for activities for persons in more rural or remote areas of countries across the globe. And we definitely want to thank him for sharing that with us. We also want to pause to recognize our sponsors, Davenport Development, Burger King, the Ministry, um, Gender Affairs Unit, um, A.L. Thompson's, Cayman Islands Football Association, Cayman Islands Basketball Association, and of course, NCB Capital Markets, Cayman Limited. Those are our sponsors for International Men's Day, and we invite Corporate Cayman to get on board with us. Join us in sponsoring some of these events. Sponsor a football team or a basketball team for our annual basketball and six-a-side football competitions coming up on November 12th and 19th, respectively. Take a photo of your family. Take a reel doing something special. Post it on your social media platforms and tag at FRCK Man or use hashtag IMDK Man to participate in this year's real time promotion. Dr. Jerome Tuluxing, he is a lecturer with the University of the West Indies on the St. Augustine campus in Trinidad and Tobago, and he is the founder of the International Men's Day Movement. Of course, we are happy that this was a regional initiative and has now become a global initiative celebrated in over 90 countries worldwide. Um, uh, Dr. Jerome, he mess said he had to come off line real quick. Uh, my name is Chuck Taylor. Uh, I am the program director here at Bobo 89.1 FM. And I was listening to the conversation. And yes. I have to be honest with you. It's one that I think... Um, Cayman men need to step up to the plate for. And when I say that, not that you're not doing it now, but internationally compared to how small we are, this should be something that we step up and do regularly. I I get the fact that we celebrate November 19th and we celebrate November as a whole and Movember and all these other things, but we need to be in the community Often We need to be heard often and we need to be seen often. And that's why I thank so much the Family Resource Center for allowing this to be heard because a lot of people don't have it as top of mind awareness. What would be some of the, the challenges that you have identified, Chuck? Well, one of the things I just think is that our timing is off with things. We are so business orientated as a society 
that we sometimes get short with the onsite of we need to have some one-on-one time with young men. Mm. You know, we we socialize a lot, and that's great. But young men are very in tune to one-on-one communication. Growing up, sports is great. Sports is a great idea, and sports has always been one of the things I definitely like in that area because you you're teaching social skills on a globe. But sometimes young men need to have that one-on-one time to kind of ask you questions that they're not comfortable asking in a group setting. And and this is one of the things I think. So so uh, young men with a passion, uh, young men with an idea, young men with similar interests as you would have need to ask you and talk to you about things that matter to them that they can't do in a in a social setting, which is a football, basketball, you you know those, those kind of settings, mm-hmm. or even in a church setting, because there are certain things that we grew up with as young men that we specifically asked our dads about. Mm-hmm. We, we specifically asked that uncle about. We had that cool uncle that you could talk to. Mm-hmm. You know, we had a, a family member who was good with um, electronics. That they, you know, and so we were saying, hey, you know, what about this? You know, for me growing up, I had a cousin who was instrumental in music. Yes, he, he was. He was that family member that we went over to his house, and he had every record imaginable. We would sit there for hours. Everybody would go. We would be left there talking about music. Oh, did you like this song? So that helped me find out that I liked music. So that was a positive. That was a positive for you. For me. Mm -hmm. But if I didn't have that one-on-one time with him, I don't think I would have followed suit with it. Were there other influences? And that's just it. Where we were at that time... You had that one family member that did that one thing. It wasn't like you had a rounded family member, one, a gentleman who was good with everything. We had an uncle who was a chef. Mm-hmm. You had an uncle who went to, he, he was on the, on the ship, so he was a, the best chef on the ship. He came home, he cooked at all the barbecues. Yes. But he never cooked anywhere else. So if you wanted to have that conversation with him, you better be at that barbecue. Because he wasn't wasn't necessarily present at all times. He wasn't present at all times, but you knew a family get-together, he was there cooking. But Chuck, tell me this. Wouldn't it be fair to say that he was out working, which caused him to not have the time? Right. But nowadays, how many times do we have those family get-togethers? Now, very rare. Because mm-hmm. we are always super busy. We're, we're almost too. I can count how many times I can hear, oh, we're going to have a, a get together and things didn't go right and you never had it. In the old days, if things didn't go right, you still had it. You, you still made sure that that family get together was there. What, one of the things that we have to realize is the nucleus of our community has gotten so broad that sometimes you don't know who lives on your street anymore. Be- before all the men knew all the men on your street. Mm-hmm. Y- you just knew because you were there. You, you, if something happened, you, you knew who, if the kids got in a fight, I'm going to so-and-so's house because I'm going to talk to his dad. So it was a village. It was a village. It was a very I mean, smaller community right. versus what we have now. Now, now, mind you, we, we still have the same, you know, 24 mileage, right? We, we still have the same, but we don't communicate as much as we used to. Which is why the Family Resource Center, of course, spearheads and leads a charge with the International Men's Day campaign. And Dr. Jerome earlier spoke about some of the pillars. Um, celebrating the positive contributions exactly. and, 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 and celebrating the positive male role models. Um, Chuck, for you, uh, how, are, how, how do you contribute? What are some of those things you learned from your uncle that you're now passing on to the what next the generation? Things, uh, for me, I am um, an office guy. 
I spend most of my time in the office. So the weekends, mm-hmm. I'm doing construction. I'm working on the house. I'm doing stuff. I have uh, little nephews. In, I call them nephews, but I have one daughter. Yeah. So I have other nephews from fra- friends and stuff like that. Come right. on over. Yeah, um, I need some help. I'm doing this. You know, when I DJ, I make them load the van for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a, a young man in here now who is interning with us because he said, oh, I, you know, I like music. Well, come on in. Let me show you some stuff. Yes. The door should be open for that. Even though they don't know who you are, what you do, they see you in the community. Mm-hmm. And, and because of that, you want to know, come, let me show you what I know. It took me 35 years to know this. I'm going to try to teach you in five Yes. So that you can be ahead of the game by 20 plus years when it's time for you to take over for what I'm doing. Because I'm not going to be here forever. So, and, you know, I'm going to be here as long as I can. But my knowledge came from 30 other years before me. Mm-hmm. So I have 60 years of knowledge because somebody gave me all that they had. Yes. So I want to give you all that I have. So when you're ready to succeed in life, you're able to do so. But you can't do so on your own because I don't want you making the same mistakes I made. So what I'm hearing is presence is important. Presence, showing up is 90% of anything. Mm -hmm. The the 10% that you learn by doing and and understanding, you got to show up. You know, I I tell people the old, you know, military saying, if I show up on time, I'm already late. Mm Mm-hmm. So showing up is important. And, and, and when we're leading by example, part of showing up is the first part of the leading. Exactly. Showing exactly. up, being there is first part of you know, leading by example. The same thing from Big Brothers, Big Sisters. You know, mm-hmm. half, of the, half of them just want to know that you're there, that when they come out the door, you're there waiting for them to, to take them on that trip to show them what you need to show them. Because, you know, as, as young people, they've been let down so much in life that, you know, your words mean nothing anymore. You, you got to you gotta show and prove. So if I tell them, I said, you know, guys, at the end of the day, you know, the most important thing is if you want a job that's going to pay you a million dollars, you got to start off learning how to get paid for five dollars. You, you, you don't have my job or your job just by walking into it, you got to pay your dues. You got you got to spend time learning, and the only way how you can spend time learning is working with somebody who knows. Okay, I I, I, I can I can watch as much YouTube videos as I want until I do it. I'm just watching videos. So by leading by example, it's a practical thing. It is a practical thing. You know, they, young, young people want to see and know who you are because they already see because social media already show you who you are. They, oh, I'm following you. you but, oh, I never know you do this. Mm-hmm. I didn't know you do this. You know, I didn't know you do these certain things. All of these things are critical in their understanding of who we are. Yes. And, and I think that is the most important thing that, that you really need to know is at the end of the day that you are delivering on what you say. If I'm saying, you know what, and I'm being a little vain here, but I'm saying I'm the voice on the radio. Mm-hmm. I'm there every day. When I'm not there on that one day I'm sick, they're like, what happened to Chuck? He must, he must be sick. Right. Everybody knows when you're not doing what you say you're doing because they understand who you are. That's all you do. I'm there day in and day out. You know, um, I had a conversation. And I know we're getting short on time. I had a conversation with someone and I said, you know what? One of the most responsible things you could ever do is not yell fire. And he was like, what are you talking about? I said, you're in a position of authority if you yell fire everyone's going to run so 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 everyone's going to panic so you need to understand your role and be able to deliver in your role so that the rest of your community so so when politicians do bad and I'm not I'm just using that as an example when a politician do bad and that's a male politician you look say wow 
he did that and he, he got away with it. What's that say to the younger generation? That's a message. That's a message. What is the message? All right. Thank you, Chuck, for sharing those thoughts on men leading by example, which is the theme for this year's International Men's Day movement. We celebrate International Men's Day here, as with the rest of the world, on November 19th. And I'd just like to remind our listeners of some of the activities we have planned for this year. So here on Bobo 89.1 FM for the next weeks, every Tuesday at 1 p.m., we'll be here for our Rethink Parenting program, where we're going to be discussing different topics in relation to the International Men's Day movement and issues surrounding men and boys. So join us next week for uh, the direct talk on the men leading by example on the 15th we deal with masculinity and men's health on the 22nd we talk about education and employment and then on the 29th we'll be joined by um, uh, specialists in the area looking at nurturing fathers and raising resilient boys we just want to again remind persons to tag us on f on social media at frck man and use the Hashtag IMDK Man for all your photos and reels and videos this month as we celebrate International Men's Day. Or 3x3 Basketball comes up on November 12th. And this will be at Kamana Bay at 9 a.m. It's the fourth annual 3x3 Basketball competition. Of course, it's free entry and IMD shirts are provided. The cash prize this year is $500 and we're inviting all the basketballers to come out. Adult ballers, we have two divisions, the under 12 division and then we have the open division. So we want, uh, uh, there's a section for under 12 youth. You are being invited to come out. Parents, please bring out your boy children to be a part of that competition. And then the open division goes immediately after the under 12 division. We invite you to support our Just for a Cause. Purchase an IMD t-shirt. It's only $25 and all proceeds go towards supporting social programs for men and boys. So contact FRC at FRC at gov.ky or call us 949-0006 to pick up your IMD t-shirts. And of course, on International Men's Day itself on November 19th, we are going to be having a six-a-side football competition starting at 9 a.m. at the CIFA Stadium in Prospect. So come out, register your team early so you could be a part of that competition, six-on-six competition. It's a mixed competition. Adults and children play together on the same team, on the same field to promote male camaraderie and to promote positive real world models while being on the football field. We want to wrap up today by giving a shout out to all our sponsors, Davenport Development, Burger King, Gender Affairs Unit, um, A.L. Thompson's, um, CIFA, Cayman Island Basketball Association, and of course, NCB Capital Markets, Cayman Limited. We want to thank our sponsors for joining us this year to celebrate the achievements and the, the, the contributions of men and boys on Cayman Islands. And we want to invite the community to join us to be a part of all the activities and the events that will happen this year to celebrate International Men's Day. You are listening to Rethink Parenting. Brought to you by the Family Resource Center. And we want to thank you for listening to us today. Join us next week at 1 p.m. as we continue with the Rethink Parenting and giving a special attention to the International Men's Day movement. God bless you all. Have a good day. The Family Resource Center invite you to join us on Bobo 89.1 FM for our weekly show called Rethink Parenting where we share practical and positive parenting information to support happy, healthy family life. We'll share how to handle day-to-day issues. We'll address common challenges with parenting, such as how to manage misbehavior, supporting our teens through growing up, managing co-parenting dynamics, and how to take care of ourselves and manage our own stressors. Family Resource Center, committed to building people, building families. Tune in on Bobo 89.1 FM. Find us at frc.gov.ky or call us on 949-0006. Submit your questions and concerns regarding parenting to us and we'll share them on air. Join us for our weekly show called Rethink Parenting.